Thank you for joining us at the Anguilla Financial Services Commission's FinTech and Compliance Conference. We are happy that you could join us this year in 2021 for the exciting offering that we have. Now for the conference, we have a number of thought leaders, academics, innovators, people that are steeped in compliance knowledge, and that includes staff here at the commission. I am happy to be joined by Sharon A. Carty and Giselle Hodge both regulators here at the Commission who are going to speak about some of the innovative regulatory solutions offered here. Now, in 2021, there are a lot of discussions as it relates to a lack of regulatory clarity for innovators, fintech, virtual asset services providers, but my colleagues are going to clarify for you exactly where you can stand in Anguilla. They will be looking at existing legislation for virtual asset service providers, as well as some exciting pieces of legislation soon to be enacted. And I would welcome you to visit the Commission's website or send us an email to our innovation office at innovate at AFSC.ai. And now, on to my colleagues, Giselle Hodge and Sharon Carty. Thank you, Simone, for that awesome introduction. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking to you about Anguilla's regulatory framework for utility tokens. For the past four years, the Commission has built and is continuously strengthening its regulatory framework for utility tokens. Here's a summary or overview of the Commission's regulatory journey concerning utility tokens. In 2017, the Commission began the drafting process for the Anguilla Utility Token Offering Auto Legislation. The year of 2018 signified the establishment of the world's first regulatory framework for a specific type of initial coin offering with the enactment of the Anguilla Utility Token Offering Act 2018, the Auto Act. In 2020, the Utility Token Exchange legislation was enacted to complement the Auto legislation and amendments were made. Under the Auto Act, a utility token means any token that does not provide the holder or holders with one ownership or equity interest in the issuer, two entitlement to share of profits of the issuer, three legal status as a creditor, and four the right to the distribution of pro profits from the issuer, where a token is defined as any cryptographically secure digital representation of a set of rights, including smart contracts provided on a digital platform and issued by an issuer. Service providers under the Auto Act. There are currently two service providers under the Auto Act. One, the issuer. An issuer is a person undertaking an initial or secondary utility token offering. Whereas an auto administrator is a person who provides a utility token offering issuer, issuer with any of the following services. A, escrow services. B, administration of the register of subscribers. C, collection, review, and record keeping of customer due diligence conducted on subscribers. The Auto Act establishes a framework, therefore, for the regulation of service providers involved in initial and secondary utility token offerings. The Auto Act is supplemented by a host of regulations which expand on the areas including the application process, email CFT requirements of service providers, qualified companies, white paper, and levy. As mentioned before, the Utility Tokens Exchange was, act, was enacted in 2020. The Utility Tokens Exchange Act 2020 Exchange Act allows utility token exchange operators to obtain a license from the Commission to operate a utility token exchange in or from within Angola. A utility token exchange 
is a digital market exchange place or facility that provides for the congregating of users to trade utility tokens for other utility tokens or money. Now I have the pleasure to pass it on to my colleague Sharini, who will discuss what's to come. So thank you very much, Giselle, for taking us through the auto legislation, as well as the utility token offering exchange legislation. So over the past two years, the commission has been working feverishly to create a suite of legislation that is inclusive and innovative. Since then, the Commission has been involved in the drafting of the new company's legislation, the Anguilla Business Companies Act and regulations, which will be administered by the Commercial Registry. We have also drafted the Variable Business Companies Bill, which is one of the different pieces of legislation to complement the ABC Act. And we've also drafted the Securities and Investment Funds Bill, and most recently, the Digital Payment Systems Bill, which will be published in short order. So what's next? The ABC Bill. So it was initially published for consultation in October 2020. And this piece of legislation would in effect repeal and replace the existing Companies Act and the International Business Companies Act. And the ABC Act is basically designed in a manner to increase the types of corporate vehicles that can be formed in Anguilla. And those companies may include companies limited by shares, companies limited by guarantee but not authorized to issue shares, companies limited by guarantee authorized to issue shares, so on and so forth. Also included, or the private limited companies, which will allow for structures to be incorporated for closely held operations, such as family businesses, private trust companies, as well as restricted purpose companies, which can be incorporated for a restricted purpose, with a restricted purpose. So companies incorporated under the ABC Act will be allowed to conduct business globally as well as and or locally. So what happens is, is that there will be no clear distinction between local and international companies. With the Companies Act, the ABC, there will also be the ushering in of new and improved commercial registry system. So you will eventually see the ACON being retired. And the system will, will have built-in components to create customer due diligence registers and beneficial ownership registers. And these registers will be able to help Anguilla in satisfying the requirements to establish such registers, um, which would have been uh, mandated by the United Kingdom. In the case of the CDD registers, competent authorities will be able to readily access information where necessary and, and comply with international information requests in a reasonable amount of time. So the new company's registration system, along with the ABC bill, will aid in modernizing the, com the company's registry which is critical in advancing other pieces of new and improved legislation in financial services. In addition to the ABC Act, we also published the VCC, which is the Variable Capital Companies Bill, and that was published at the same time as the ABC Act. And this, this allows for companies primarily in hedge funds to be incorporated. In other words, this vehicle is, is mostly used by hedge funds, and it is modeled from the Singaporean law. It provides flexibility in issuing and redeeming shares and allows for payment of dividends from capital and other features. 
VCCs will be administered by the, com the commission being the regulatory authority responsible for trust and cooperate service providers. And this company, this type of company, it is not too common in most jurisdictions, but it makes Anguilla attractive. It will make Anguilla attractive as a jurisdiction for entities that require such a company structure for a specific type of business model. Additionally, in November 2020, the Commission would have issued the Securities and Investment Funds Bill for consultation. And the Securities Act, which governs most domestic and offshore securities business and securities that are traded on the Eastern Caribbean Securities Exchange, are currently regulated by the Eastern Caribbean Securities Regulatory Commission. However, the Mutual Funds Act is enacted in Anguilla and the Commission is responsible for administering that piece of legislation. The Draft Securities and Investment Fund Bill will, be repe will repeal and replace the Mutual Funds Act once enacted and of course, it will now include provisions to cater to additional items, such as alternative investment funds and other service providers not previously captured under the Mutual Funds Act. Under this bill, the investment funds in any, in any currency, with the exception of the Eastern Caribbean dollar, may be established. Custodians, promoters, depositories will also be added to the existing fund manager and fund administrator service providers catered for under the current Mutual Funds Act. The bill will also include digital payment token services. So custodians will be able to accept digital payment tokens as a means of payment for the provision of goods and services. In addition to the usual fiat currencies and commodities, custodians will also be able to hold cryptocurrencies and other digital assets. Only professional funds will be able to invest in these types of assets. And in such cases, these funds will be required to demonstrate what potential risks have been considered and how those risks will be mitigated. So finally, the Commission has recently drafted its digital payment systems legislation. And the Commission would have recognized a need to have legislation to accommodate for faster, cheaper, and more inclusive payment services. So the need would have arise mainly due to challenges experienced by banks in recent times, especially in the Caribbean region, in, as a result of correspondent banks, ex, the exercises conducted by correspondent banks to de-risk. So sending and receiving cross-border payments in the region has become a pain and, and conducting personal and business transactions are being affected. So the goal of the commission is basically to create legislation to facilitate payment services that are convenient. So the draft bill will allow for the establishment of different types of payment system service providers which will accommodate local and cross-border services. They will also accommodate transfer of the US dollar and digital currencies, and it, it will exclude the use of the Eastern Caribbean dollar. Custodial services are also being considered for digital assets under the P Digital Payment Systems Bill. The Commission hopes to publish this piece of legislation, which is already finalized, but a few tweaks are being made. But we hope to finalize and publish this piece of legislation by the end of this year or by the latest 
January 2022. And there you would have had an overview of legislation that is forward-looking and innovative, which will take Anguilla into the 21st century. Legislation that incorporates digital assets, digital asset service providers, cryptocurrencies, smart contracts, the whole nine yards. Giselle did an excellent job going over the offering as it relates to the utility tokens regime here in Anguilla. And I do hope you took careful note of all of the useful information that she provided. Additionally, I would love to thank Sharon A. Carty for her expansive review of upcoming legislation, including some of the elements that, if you take a bit of time to review the draft legislation that is available on the Commission's website, you will note that we are embracing either technology neutral positions, or we've explicitly addressed our minds to certain elements of cryptocurrency, smart contracts, and other innovative provisions. And again, thank you for joining us here at the Anguilla Financial Service Services Commission's FinTech and Compliance Conference for 2021. We look forward to seeing you in the future.